This video is brought to you by Brilliant Work. If you want to improve your problem solving skills and be in the community with people who like math around the world, be sure you guys go check them out. Okay, today is the day. I will show you guys why that the area of this region is indeed T over 2. So then let's do a quick recap real fast. Right here, we are on the hyperbola, x squared minus square squared is equal to 1, and we just want to be on the right hand side. So it's this curve right here, and let's pick a point on the curve. Let's say it's right here. Connect this point to the origin. This is the region that we're talking about. And last time we saw why we took this and that to form the parameterization of the hyperbola. Yes, there are other parameterization of the hyperbola, but those t in those equations, they have no geometric connections, unlike this one right here. Once again, you see, when you have this t right here, this area is in fact t over 2, which is really similar to the usual trig functions on the unit circle. And if you see, if you haven't seen my other videos, be sure you guys go check them out. I will have links in the description for you guys. And we also talk about the connection between the hyperbolic trig functions and also the regular trig functions in the complex world in the previous video. So be sure you guys go watch them. So first of all, I am not going to be using caution sinh in this video because I really want to show you guys why this and that will be the coolest thing to form the parameterization of the uh, hyperbola. And let's just go ahead and do the math now. First of all, right here, of course, we can form two things in order to get this region. The first thing is, of course, from here to here, we can make this into a right triangle and the distance from the origin to this point of course is the x and then of course this will be the y and they are given by these two equations and let's go ahead and just do the work along the way so to get the area of course the area of this triangle is just half times base times height half of x times y right so let's write that down one half x y that's pretty much it then we will have to minus the region that we don't want, which is this part right here, isn't it? From here to here. And because that's the area under the curve, so we will have to use integration. And let me just kind of review with you guys. Of course, we draw the rectangle, and of course, this is dx and this is y. So by using the integral, it's just pretty much the integral from A to B. And let me just say this is A, this is B. I know A should be what? Should be 1. Because when t is equal to 0, x of 0 is equal to 1. And you can just check that out on your own. And we have y times dx pretty much. So this integral represents this area in blue. And when we work this out, it's pretty much the area of that region. And now let's go ahead and do the work. Right here, 1 half times x times y, I will take everything into the t world. x is given by this equation, so let's write that down. So we have to multiply by another 1 half, and it's this, which is e to the t plus e to the negative t. And then times y, which is this. And I will multiply by 1 half e to the t minus e to the negative t. With that being said, this right here will be representing the area of this red triangle. Okay? And by the way, I'm just going to do the upper half right here. Because the upper half and then the bottom half is symmetrical, right? So if you want to talk about the region down below, it's pretty much the same thing. You can try that on your own. And with that being said, when you have this point right here, is when t is greater than 0 because this right here is when t is equal to 0. So let me just put that down as well. Perhaps I'll use green for this. This point is some t value greater than 0. And this point right here is when t is equal to 0. And I guess we'll see why we want to use that later on. But anyway, this right here is pretty much it at the moment. Now, let's talk about this integral. We will also take this into the t world. And let's do that. V minus. Let me just draw the integrals first, the integral right here first. And for the y, of course, it's just this. So let's put that down. So we have 1 half parentheses e to the t minus e to the negative t. That's good. Now let's talk about dx. 
Well, here we have x of t. How can we get dx? Let's take a look. Let me write this down. We know x is equal to x of t, right? x is a function of time. We can differentiate both sides, so we can get dx dt. And on the right hand side, I can just write down x prime of t. And then I can treat this as differential. I can multiply both sides by dt. So dx is pretty much the derivative, which is, you look at this equation now, the derivative of this right here, and then multiply by dt. That's pretty much it. So if you would like, you can just do this real quick. dx is equal to the derivative of this right here. All right? So let me put down 1 half. And the derivative of e to the t is just e to the t. And then the derivative of this is just that. But the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of negative t, which is negative 1. Right? So dx is equal to this times dt. And now, of course, I can just put this down for dx. That's pretty much it. Okay? And here is the next question. It seems that I'm in the T world, but what should I put down right here? Haha. -ha. Usually, when we are in the X world, we talk about X is equal to the beginning X value to the ending X value, right? But in the T world, we have to talk about the initial time and also the ending time. That's why I put this down right here. Initially, is T equal to zero right here, right? And then you travel up to some positive time. And then you can technically write it as a t naught whatsoever, right? t naught. Technically, you should do that. But seriously, when you put on t naught, you have to put on t naught on all this. It's too much trouble. So uh, let me just put this down. We go from 0 to t, like this. And in fact, here's another trouble. Because right here, we are in the t world. Here is t as well. And it depends on what class you are in. Some classes, it's OK to have this variable being the same as that variable. That's OK. That's in the upper division math classes, usually. It's well OK with that. But if not, we don't want to have this t, right, the dt, whatever, being the same as that t. And the way to fix that is just that we're going to utilize another, what we call the dummy variable. So. This is just like a net picking part, okay? What we'll do is I will erase all this t right here so that we don't get confused with the t right here with this t. And I will change to another variable. Perhaps you can use u, you can use seriously whatever you want. I will just use u, I guess. U. So I can work this out and then plug in u is equal to t. But hopefully you guys are okay that this right here will represent this area here, okay? Anyway, enough talking here, let's do the math. 1 half, 1 half, 1 half, when you multiply them, you get 1 over 8. And let's do this times that. And notice, this is just the difference of square, right? Because that's the formula. I can just say, this thing square, which is going to be e to the 2t, and then minus e to the 2t. But that's negative, so minus 2t like this. And then I'll just have to work this out. So now let's see, minus 1 half, 1 half, so that's factor out the 1 over 4. And then we have the integral from 0 to some t. And now we just have to multiply this out, this and that. But notice, this is, they are both minus. So it's the binomial formula, right? So we have to do this square, namely e to the 2u, and then minus 2 times this and that, which is e to the u, e to the negative u, and then plus this thing squared, which is e to the negative 2u. And then, of course, in the end, we have the u. That's pretty much it. And, of course, this right here is just 1, because, yeah. Anyway, distribute the 1 over 8. So you have 1 over 8, e to the 2t, minus 1 over 8, e to the negative 2t. And then, let's write this down, minus 1 over 4. And let's put down a big parentheses for the result of the integration. Integrating e to the 2u, we get 1 half e to the 2u. This is pretty much integrating negative 2, so we get minus 2u, because we are in the u world technically now. And then right here, we will have to integrate this, which is e to the negative 2u, but then you divide it by 
the negative 2. And you add, so it's like, say, the minus right here. So this is the integration step. And now you have to plug in this. So I'll put this down, 0 to t, like that. OK, then uh, if you would like, uh, just go ahead and do that. Perhaps I will. Let's say this is still the minus 1 over 4 all the way in the front. Plugging t into all the u's, so we get this is why we don't want to have the t and the u being the same variable. That's the reason why we didn't want to have that. That's why I changed that to the u. Okay, but anyway, some people it's okay, some people not okay. I don't know. Anyway, plugging t into all the u's, we get t, first. and this is just the first part. And then we have to subtract plugging zero into all the u's, so we get one half. like this. So in the end, let's just write this down. This is 1 over 8, e to the 2t, minus 1 over 8, e to the negative 2t. And now we'll have to distribute. And perhaps let's do the easy ones first. Notice this right here, just 0, that's easy. And notice this is pretty much just 1. This is also 1. This is positive 1 half, minus 1 half. So this and that also cancel out. That's nice. So I just have to distribute this into the parentheses, right? So I will have to do all that. And now you see, this times that is, let me just write it down in red, minus 1 over 8, and then we have e to the 2t. This times that is what? Oh, look at that. This is negative 1 over 4 times this is negative 2. Hey, that's going to be positive 2 over 4, which is 1 half. And then, of course, we have the t. And then this times that is plus. And we have the 1 over 8, and this right here, e to the negative 2t. And guess what? Whew! Look at this, can be cancelled with that. And this can be cancelled out with that. So you can cancel this guys out. So what do we have left? Right, 1 half t. 1 half t, of course, just to, <laughs> I don't know why I put down over there, is t over 2. Whew! This is so cool, isn't it, right? Yeah, hopefully you guys all enjoyed this video and I think with this being done, I'm really, really happy because I finally uh, finished all the introduction to the hyperbolic trig functions. And before we go, I just want to thank Brilliant.Work for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to you know, have a place to go practice your math skills, to learn new math, or to try out your problem-solving abilities, please go visit Brilliant.Work. Use the link Brilliant.Work slash BlackPinRedPen so that you guys can get a 20% of discount if you want to sign up for the annual premium subscription. Because they offer a lot of interesting courses, some of the courses like calculus, discrete math, probabilities, logic, computer science, etc, etc for you guys. And they are set up in a really interesting way. You guys won't be bored. And because they believe in learning true practice, just like myself as well, that's why they also offer problem solving sections for you guys. They have new questions each every week, ranging from basic to advanced. And some of the advanced questions they are really hard, but I think that's what you guys enjoy to do as well, right? Solve hard questions so that you can learn new things. And you guys can actually go there and sign up for their free account and start working on those questions. They can also keep track of progress for you guys, which is really, really cool. And that's really amazing. I do that a lot myself as well. But anyway, be sure you guys go check them out. You guys can find the link in the description. And as always, that's it.